Now, neoplasia means new tissue. So neo means new and plasia relates to tissue. So in some disease processes, new tissue is developed or formed in the body. And this is abnormal. It's pathological. This new tissue should not be generated. But when new tissue is generated, when there is a neoplasia, when there's a new tissue where there was not a tissue before, we find that it's either a benign neoplasia or a malignant neoplasia. And it's, of course, clinically vital to differentiate between a benign condition and a malignant condition. Now, what do we mean by benign or malignant? Well, benign doesn't necessarily mean it's not harmful. It can be harmful and it can cause problems. But the thing is, with a benign neoplasia, is that neoplasia, that new tissue, does not spread to other parts of the body. It grows locally. Whereas with a malignant neoplasia, that will spread to other parts of the body and the new tissue will start growing in many different parts of the body, giving rise to neoplasia, usually tumour formation in many parts of the body. So it's very important to differentiate between a benign and a malignant condition. Let's think about this in a little more detail. The growth rate in a benign condition is usually relatively slow. As a general principle, benign tumours grow slowly over weeks, months or even years. Whereas malignant tumours can grow very quickly. Not always, but many malignant tumours can show rapid growth rates. The tumour bulk can increase quickly. Now, benign tumours tend to grow out in a sort of a more spherical, rounded way. So they don't locally invade tissues. Now, they can certainly put pressure on local tissues. It's not saying they're insignificant. They can press on a blood vessel or on the trachea or some structure, but they don't invade. They are, think of them as balls in the tissue. They, they are round. They, they grow equally. Typically, they grow equally in all directions. Whereas a malignant tumour is completely different. Malignant tumours invade and penetrate local tissues. So it's like sticking fingers out into the tissue. There'll be lots of little strands of malignant cells penetrating out into the previously healthy tissues. And I think this is probably why cancer is uh, derived from the word crab. Because a crab's got like many arms and it puts them out as, as like almost like tentacles into the tissues. So the local tissues are invaded by a malignant neoplasia. And as we've said, benign tumours do not metastasize. By definition, a benign tumour will develop in one part of the body and will stay in that part of the body. Whereas a malignant tumour will metastasize. Meta means change. Stasis means standing. There's a change in standing or a change in position. But it's not that the tumour moves from one site to another, it spreads, it multiplies. So these cancer cells are rapidly dividing all the time. Some of the cells in the tumour stop sticking to other cells. Now, normally in tissues, in a healthy tissue, a cell secretes onto its surface what is called adhesion molecules. So the tissues or the cells which comprise a tissue stick together they don't float apart but part of the problem with malignant cells is that the cells are no longer normal they do not function as normal cells function and they cease to produce these adhesion molecules this means that they can simply float away and they can float away in the lymphatics they can float away in the blood they can float away through body cavities such as the peritoneal cavity in the abdomen or the pleural cavity in the chest or through the subarachnoid space in the cerebrospinal fluid or whatever it is they can simply float away and sometimes they can seed new areas so the cell the malignant cell will lodge in a new tissue and it will start multiplying in that new tissue giving rise to a secondary tumor so what we say is the original site where the tumour developed 
is called the primary site. So for example, primary tumour in the colon is relatively common. And this can break away bits of the cells, bits of the tumour can break away, the cells can float away. And in the case of the colon, they often float away in the hepatic portal vein and they metastasize to the liver. So in that case, the primary site would be in the colon and the metastatic sites would be in the liver. And very often there's multiple metastatic sites in the liver. So the primary is where it began. The secondary sites are the metastatic sites. Now, another thing about benign tumours is they're relatively easy to resect. OK, they can be in tricky parts of the body, like the neck, where you might need a specialised surgeon to resect them. But like a wart in your fingers, for example, a wart is a form of benign tumour. They're remarkably easy to resect. And when you're doing the resection or when you're assisting in the resection, it's quite easy to see the, the boundaries of the tumour and you can cut the whole thing out. And that means that they're unlikely to recur after resection. So surgically, removal of benign tumours is relatively straightforward. Whereas with malignant tumours, it's very much harder to know where the extent of the tumour is. There might be a finger of the tumour that's penetrated out beyond where you thought the margins of the tumour were. And this means even if you only leave a few malignant cells in, that recurrence is likely to occur. So you get recurrence after resection more commonly, certainly, than you do with benign tumours. Surgically, they're much harder to resect. This is why surgeons often do a wide margin excision. So the surgeon will think where the edge of the tumour is, and then they'll take out a margin around that as well. And if you send that whole biopsy, that whole bit of resected tissue off to the pathologists, they can actually look at the margins of the resected tissue and tell on a report whether it is all uh, excised or not. Benign tumours don't normally have systemic effects unless they're pressing on vital structures, whereas malignant tumours do have possible systemic effects. They can have effects as a result of the changes in the body that they initiate because they're spreading all over the body. And also there's another type of effect called paraneoplastic effect that can be systemic as well. Paraneoplastic effects are effects which are not caused by the direct physical presence of the tumour, but they are other systemic manifestations of malignant disease. So benign tumours normally do not have systemic effects, whereas malignant tumours usually do have systemic effects. And then, of course, we're dependent on pathological diagnosis in any treatment of cancer. And we do cytology. And in benign conditions, the cytology should be normal. The cells look like normal tissue cells. But malignant tumours look very different to normal cells. So when the pathologists look at these things under microscopes, it's actually relatively easy to tell the difference between a malignant cell and a benign cell or a normal cell because the cells look radically different. Usually the cells are bigger. They have irregular nuclei. The nuclei are often enlarged. The cells look completely different. And we see a lot of mitotic figures in the, in the um, malignant cells. Now, what are these mitotic figures? Well, mitotic is a word which relates to mitosis which is the normal form of somatic cell division. And in cancer, there is a rapid, uncontrolled division of cells. These cells are dividing far too often. Now, when a cell divides, all of the chromosomes in the cell come to the midline of the cell and the chromosomes contract. And when you stain a tissue with particular stains, you can see all of the chromosomes lined up in the middle of the cell. If you like, the cell has been caught in the very act of cell division. It's uh, sort of been caught with its trousers down, if you like. It's been caught in the process of cell division when the chromosomes are all lined up in the middle of the cell. And when you can see all the chromosomes lined up in the middle of the cell, this is called a mitotic figure. We can see these mitotic figures. 
what it actually means is when you look at a tissue and there's a lot of mitotic figures, that means there's a lot of cell division going on. Whereas if you look at a tissue where you don't get a lot of mitosis, there will be fewer mitotic figures visible. So you can see a lot of mitotic figures, but the cells are bizarre, irregular nuclei. They look completely different. Now, histologically, the study of tissues, so the tissue will still carry out its original function. Now, sometimes this can be a nuisance. For example, if you've got a benign tumour in the thyroid gland, that might can continue producing thyroid hormone and the patient might become thyrotoxic. So sometimes that can be a problem, other times it's not. But the form and function of the tissue is, is preserved, particularly the function of the tissue is preserved. It keeps on doing what it did. Whereas malignant tumours, uh, the histology, the, fu the function is very often completely lost or changed and the form of the tissue is completely changed. So, for example, if someone has leukaemia, the term leukaemia literally means white blood. The blood is absolutely crammed full of white cells. And, of course, it's the white cells that are responsible for combating infection. But the problem in leukaemia is these are not normal white cells. They are malignant white cells. So they have lost their normal function. They are no longer capable of mounting an immune response so one of the great ironies in leukaemia is that although the patient's blood is full of white blood cells, these are leukemic, malignant white blood cells and do not provide any immunological function. And this means that these patients are often immunocompromised and therefore susceptible to intercurrent infections. So is the tumour benign? Or malignant. If it's benign of course we can reassure the patient that they have not got cancer. If it's malignant then the patient does have a malignancy. They have got a cancer and uh, will need to be managed accordingly. Accordingly.